I think that the relationship between him and the art dealers was mutually exploitative. He knew they would give him ready cash. They knew the cash would go for drugs. Diego Cortez was probably the first person to really recognize Basquiat's talent as an artist. Cortez created this show in 1981 called New York New Wave that was um, a catalyst for the whole downtown art movement. People came to PS1 as if it were a mecca. PS1 is in Queens. And thousands of people showed up at this show. And Basquiat was the sensation of the show. He created 15 paintings. And Sandro Kia was so taken with the artist's work that he he uh, introduced Basquiat to Anina Nose, who became his first real commercial art dealer. But in the meantime, Diego Cortez was selling work out of his apartment, and Bischofberger bought like 25 pieces out of that. Bruno Bischofberger, who became Basquiat's first international art dealer about a year later. So Anina Nose gave him his very first studio, and it was actually a nice studio, so that cannot be dismissed. However, the studio was in the basement of her gallery, and one of the things she did to promote his art was to bring some of the rich dealers down to watch him paint. She also sold his work sometimes while it was still wet, and sometimes assistants signed it. And Basquiat became quickly known as kind of the enfant terrible of the art world, but also this model of his, his being kind of enslaved in the basement became, you know, a very bad image of him, one that kind of stuck. About your, your, the story that you're always uh, being locked in the basement in order to paint? Oh, uh, that's, that's just a... Uh... It just has a nasty edge to it, you know? I mean, I, I was never lo locked anywhere. I mean, if I was white, they would just say artist in residence rather than sell or other stuff. No. It was a spacious place. He was lucky to have it. But the fact that she brought collectors down there all the time while he was working was very disruptive for him and turned him into kind of a, you know, a tourist destination, and he didn't appreciate it. After that, Bischofberger would uh, notoriously sweep into town and buy up everything in his studio in cash, and again, a lot of that money went towards drugs. Basquiat's driving force was his desire to be accepted, and that certainly originated with the fact that his father didn't respect him or respect his art, at least during Basquiat's own lifetime. He was always seeking some sort of father figure or some sort of acceptance. The art dealers obviously conveniently filled that role and took full advantage of it. 